Well, hello everyone, and welcome back to the Econobox Garage. In this week's episode, as we continue with our bug eye build, I'll be dismantling the rear axle. So I'll be taking off all the brakes, uh, checking out the hubs, and getting them removed. So stick around. I hope you enjoy the video. Well, now that I've got the front suspension bits pulled apart and uh, brakes assessed on that, I'm going to get going on the differential and the rear brakes. So I did take this to the car wash the other day and pressure washed most of the gunk and oil and stuff that was uh, on there. So I still have some cleaning to do. But before I do that, I'm going to start taking uh, things off. I'll take the brake lines off and uh, I'll remove the emergency brake hardware at the back here. That's uh, that's this rod here, uh, this assembly here it goes across. And this is where the, uh, the cable attaches to right here. So the emergency brake actuating rod is, is attached with a clevis pin and that in turn is secured with a cotter pin through here. And there's also a little shim of sorts on that. That's the same on both ends, so I'll take that apart. So I'll remove the clevis pins on both ends, unbolt the bracket from the differential, then I'll have the emergency brake actuator out of the way. Here's the e-brake actuator rods uh, assembly taken off, so I'll just put that aside for now and we'll get that cleaned up. Next up I'm going to take off the, the brake lines and that, and I, as I've mentioned in previous videos, I do have uh, new lines to go in both the hard lines and the soft line, so I'll unscrew those. I'm going to do my best to save these little straps and reuse those when the things go back together. So what I've been trying to do is uh, get the hole there aligned up so I can get access to that little screw in there. Then I can then I can back the uh, the shoes off the drum and then hopefully it'll slide right off. So you can see I've taken the two screws out that, that hold the drum in and I've just been I put the nuts back on here so when I was prying on it I wasn't going against the threads. So, so I'm now aligned up. I'll loosen that off. I'll do the same on the other side and hopefully those drums will come right off. So I've left these uh, brake lines uh, overnight with some uh, penetrant on them. So I'm going to see if I can get those off without uh, damaging them. Although I am not overly concerned, because uh, as I've mentioned in an earlier video, I do have replacements for all the hard lines on both on the whole car. So um, if I break it, I'm not too worried about it. And you can see I have the brake drums off. So I'll get the half shaft out. Uh, then get the hub out so that I can replace all the seals. The half shaft itself is held on with just the one Phillips screw, so I'll get that out. And then theoretically this should slide right out. That will give me access to the big nut I need to undo to get the uh, the hub out. Well, that came out a lot easier than I expected. Uh, so the next step is going to be bend that tab back down or undo this nut here. One important thing to remember with uh, these big nuts on the end here is they are removed opposite to the direction of the normal tire rotation or normal wheel rotation. So with this being the right-hand side of the car, the wheel turns in this direction for the most part. That's forward. 
So this one will undo um, anti-clockwise or counterclockwise, which is basically the, the regular. So on the driver's side, or the left-hand side of the car, it will be the reverse. So just be very mindful of that because you don't want to end up over tightening and not being able to get this off. So this nut takes a uh, 1 and 7 eighths uh, socket. So we're got, I'm going to get my uh, impact out and we'll get uh, this nut removed. Okay, you can see I've got the nut off, and I've also removed the washer, uh, the lock tab that uh, goes uh, underneath there. So yeah, I'll uh, replace that when we put everything all back together. I don't have an official puller, so what I've done is I put a couple of holes in the in an ang bit of angle iron. This is uh, just two by two or one inch and a half by inch and a half and drilled them out and using the studs here and as you can see this bearing this face here is quite a ways away from the end of the threads in there so my theory is if i tighten these up a little bit at a time it should work the the hub off uh, the end of the, the stub there so uh, let's give that a try and and see how how things go That worked like a charm. I did have to put a couple of uh, thick spacers in because I ran out of thread. But uh, all in all, I'm quite pleased with how that worked and uh, with with no damage to the hub or the threads. So the right hand side is done. I'm just going to get the all the brake hardware off and the cylinder. I'll get that clean, all taken apart. I'll flip the axle around and then uh, and get to work on the left hand side. Oh, so here we have all the bits and pieces. This is the hub uh, from the left side and the, the, the half shaft uh, from the left side and the brake shoes and the cylinder. Those will get replaced and the same on the other side here. There's the hub for the right hand side and its corresponding half shaft. From as far as I can tell, all the bearings are in really good shape. So it's just a matter of replacing some seals. Uh, so the next little while, that's going to be most of my work is a lot of cleaning and polishing and painting. You may recall in an earlier video I uh, showed you the brake line set that I got. Now each of these uh, pieces has already uh, been labeled by the supplier and it provided a, a layout of uh, where they go. So these are the two lines I just pulled off the back, the, uh, the back axle. Yeah, so the ones I just took off are F and E, so I'll label those accordingly so that when time comes to install them, I can uh, bend them properly. So this is the set of sockets I picked up in order to get the uh, inch and 7 eighths for the axle nut. It comes with inch and 13 sixteenths, inch and 7 eighths, inch and 15, and a full 2 inch. These are half inch drive, so I didn't have to buy a new adapter or, or anything else to go with them. Uh, and uh, as you've seen earlier in uh, this week's video, uh, worked like a charm. I'll put a link to this in the description below, so if you're interested, uh, you can uh, pick up a set for yourself. Well, that wraps up this week's episode on the Econobox Garage. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe. Don't forget to hit that bell icon so you don't miss any future videos. Thanks again for joining me in the garage this week. We'll see you next time.